What's up, gamers? The Last Wish weapons got refreshed, and they're all certified bangers. All of these guns just went from being really mid to top meta options. And, you know, honestly, I was going to wait for some more people to kind of figure out what's going on with these perks and what makes these guns tick and all that sort of stuff. But we figured out enough to at least talk about them and tell you that, well, they're really good. I don't say that lightly. I try to make it a point on the channel to not clickbait, not overhype weapons because people are going to use what they want to use. Seriously, though, every single one of these has potential to make it into that few dozen weapons that everybody uses for everything. They are insane. All the last wish weapons now, of course, will be craftable. Make sure to pick up the quest from Hawthorne for a free red border once per account per week. Then you can also buy a red border with spoils from Hawthorne once per account per week. These are kind of stand-ins for the red border puzzles and spoils chests in other raids with craftable weapons. So that is why they are here. Make sure you take advantage of that. All of the guns also got a new origin trait called Explosive Pact, where the weapons get increases to stability and reload after using a grenade. First gun up on the docket here is the Kinetic 450 RPM Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Chattering Bone. And now Kinetic Pulse Rifles were not a very competitive space not long ago. Last season we got the new Autumn Wind from Crucible and a World Drop in the form of the Battle Scar, which both get really good rolls, but Chattering Bone has got some really hard hitting perk options. The biggest standout is no doubt Kill Clip in the first column, just like the old one. Which means you can get a roll like Kill Clip Head Seeker for PvP, which sounds absolutely disgusting. For PvE, you have a lot of options as well. You can go for double damage perks to pair with Kill Clip. Your options for that would be stuff like Kinetic Tremors, Rampage, Focus Fury, or even Harmony. If you don't want to go Kill Clip in the first column, for some reason. There's also Keep Away and Rapid Hit, which are both solid, but Kill Clip is real spicy, so that's the, the chase, if you ask me, is for Kill Clip. These 450 RPM lightweights have very good base stats, so reload and stat boosting perks like, you know, your normal Outlaw Rapid Hit, stuff like that, won't be missed as much on this gun as with many others, but you'll definitely want to add some range to this thing, especially for PvP. That's often going to come from the barrel. I still like to go for Arrowhead Break, personally, because of the poor base recoil direction of this gun, but going for range there wouldn't be out of pocket at all. You could go for like Hammer Forge Rifling or Small Bore. Definitely a valid choice. For Magazine, Accurized Rounds are here for PvP, and for PvE, and even PvP, honestly, don't sleep on things like Tactical Mag or Flared Magwell if you're going for a Kill Clip, and that, since that'll help speed up the Kill Clip reloads. Top that all off with a ranged masterwork, and this is a very exciting pulse rifle. I'll definitely be crafting a PvP roll of this gun with Kill Clip Head Seeker. That sounds just ridiculous. Then I'll probably do a PvE one as well with Kill Clip and Kinetic Tremors. I expect this gun to be seen as one of, if not the best, Kinetic Pulse Rifles in the game for both PvE and PvP before too long. And now before I move on, there is a new perk here on this gun that I wanted to mention. It's called Discord. Discord activates the same way the perk Harmony does, which is by getting a kill with another weapon. It'll then buff this weapon's aim down sight speed, stability, and accuracy cone size. Most importantly though, if you get a kill with the gun with Discord, while Discord is active, it will refund ammo back into your magazine from thin air. So let's say you have a sniper with Discord on it and you're playing Crucible. You get a kill with your primary, then switch to your sniper, and now it's all buffed up by Discord and whatever. You one tap somebody with the sniper, and Discord will give you that shot back from thin air. Pretty decent perk. Now moving on into the special weapons, we have Supremacy, which I've done some damage testing for already, and I am shocked how good this thing is. There are all kinds of usability caveats here, but there is a role on Supremacy that has DPS comparable to the top DPS options in the game, like Izanagi Rocket Swapping and God Roll Linear Fusion Rifles, where most of the damage is being done by Supremacy, a special weapon. This is no hot swap a rocket or swap to the, nothing. It's Supremacy going hard. The role that can do this is Rewind Rounds with Bait and Switch. Rewind Rounds enables you to shoot 14 shots consecutively without reloading, and Bait and Switch requires you to shoot all three guns in a short time frame for a 35% damage buff for 10 seconds. All of those 14 shots that you're getting from Rewind Rounds, except for the shot that we used to initially activate Bait and Switch, will be benefiting from that 35% damage buff because at a 140 RPM clip that we'll be getting from this sniper, 
getting off 14 shots takes only six seconds. You'll need about maybe a second and a half to reload and somewhere in the neighborhood of zero to two, maybe three seconds to activate bait and switch, just depending on your setup. But with Supremacy being kinetic and legendary and needing this bait and switch activation, you can dust off the old Anarchy and pair it with this thing, which will add a good chunk of extra DPS to the setup while still having your energy slot freed up for an ad clear weapon, synergizing really well with bait and switch and having strong ammo economy since most of your damage is being done by Anarchy and a special weapon. So it's very easy to keep topped up. It's not a very hard setup to use either. So now, without getting into anything too crazy specific, the setup for all of this takes, you know, it's like six to eight, maybe nine seconds. And in those six seconds, the DPS is very, very high. This is the window where you're in the same neighborhood as things like God Roll Linears, Izzy Rocket Swapping, etc., and sometimes even higher than those options. The big caveats are that reactivating Bait and Switch can't be done while the buff is active and you could most definitely burn through all of your sniper ammo in a longer damage phase. You can utilize special finisher to top it up in between phases. You can do that quite easily. But in boss fights, you know, 30, 35, 40 seconds, some of the longer ones, you might just end up with your pants down toward the end of the DPS phase with nothing really to shoot the boss with other than your ad clear gun. With all that in mind, it's not going to be the de facto go-to damage strategy right away or anything like that, but I imagine there is some really high damage to be done with this gun in an encounter like maybe Explicator in Root of Nightmares. In addition to the Rewind Rounds bait and switch roll, there's also a funny roll that lets you kind of shoot forever with Rewind Rounds and fourth times the charm. With no damage perk on this thing, it's, it's really just a meme, kind of a yikes, but it's definitely funny and your ammo economy will be better, so that's something. You also have Kinetic Tremors in the fourth column, which this is the first special weapon to get Kinetic Tremors, so that's cool, but kind of kind of just that. It's kind of just cool. If you want to take it into PvP, just like the good old days, Opening Shot and Snapshot are here, which is a classic sniper roll. Can't do much better than that. Go for Arrowhead Break or Fluted Barrel for your barrel. A magazine perk like Appended Mag will be the best for PvE. And then you're going to top that off with a Handling Masterwork. At the end of the day, Supremacy is at worst a niche DPS option with very high potential in the right circumstances. At best, it might be a premier DPS strategy moving forward when paired with that Anarchy. You're, you're definitely going to want to get yourself a Rewind Rounds bait switch supremacy. The next and last special weapon is Techian Force, which is an arc adaptive frame fusion rifle that is low key undercover merciless. <laughs> this is because of a new perk for fusion rifles called Controlled Burst, where landing all of the bolts in a fusion rifle burst increases the damage and decreases the charge time of the next burst. This effect doesn't stack on itself, but you can keep re-upping it by landing full bursts consecutively. The charge time reduction is honestly not much. It's about as much of a difference as like a charge time masterwork or accelerated coils. It's there, but it's not crazy. Thing is though, as you're getting that on top of a 20% damage buff. And now fusion rifles have kind of been the go-to backup DPS option lately, due in large part because they're really easy to use, which is especially important against bosses like Nezarek, for example, since he's, uh, well, you know. You can also pair controlled burst with kill clip in the first column for another 25% damage on top of the 20% from controlled burst. Which, if you can get that rolling, it's going to absolutely cook. 45% extra damage is a little kooky. And that's where I get the Merciless comparison from. You know, that is a lot of damage. You've got, like, the kill clip activation. It's kind of like impetus on Merciless. You, you get where I'm coming from. It's definitely overselling it to compare its damage to Merciless because it's not there. It's not, it's not that high. But it's a legendary, and it is a lot more flexible than Merciless in terms of how you integrate it into your damage strategy. So it's definitely the new king of legendary fusion rifles for boss damage, at least if you ask me. If you want some more consistency than Kill Clip for boss damage, we also, of course, have some banger reloaded mag capacity perks here, like Reconstruction and Rewind Rounds, which are both fantastic options for the first column. And that'll probably be what I craft, either Reconstruction or Rewind Rounds with Controlled Burst. And then we're going to follow that up with Arrowhead Break, Accelerated Coils, and a Charge Time Masterwork. If you're a Crucible Fusion Rifle Enjoyer, there's stuff here for you too. You can do the same Barrel Mag Masterwork 
with under pressure in the first column to pair with like rangefinder, backup plan, or kickstart in the second column. Oh boy. And finally, for the, the only heavy weapon, we have the rocket launcher that is poised to dethrone Hothead as the best rocket launcher in the game. Apex Predator, a solar adaptive frame rocket launcher. This is a super interesting rocket launcher. There are tons of incredible perks here with a ton of potential, but what's so interesting is they're not really the perks we're used to seeing on the best rocket launchers in the game. For example, this is the first rocket launcher to ever roll with Slideways. This is the first rocket launcher to ever roll with Reconstruction. First to ever roll with Bait and Switch. First to ever roll with the new perk, Bipod, which is actually terrible. Terrible to the point where it is a detriment to the usability of the gun. Bipod increases your rocket launcher's magazine size to two. This is unlike the functionality of Clown Cartridge, which overflows your magazine to two. So if you had the role of Reconstruction Bipod, which this gun can get, Reconstruction would fill your rocket up to four in the mag. And there are a lot of other crazy implications for this, outside of just that one with Reconstruction, but none of them make up for the fact that Bipod reduces the damage of your rockets by 40%. So your double filled rocket mag does less damage than a single rocket buffed with explosive light. Bipod does also increase your reserves, but not by double. It's really bad. What I will say though, is Bipod is so obnoxiously weak that I would be shocked if it doesn't get buffed very soon. A big part of my reason for thinking this is if we think back to when Vow of the Disciple came out last year, Bait and Switch was then only a 20% damage buff, if I recall correctly. Nobody was talking about Cataclysmic or Bait and Switch or bothering to learn how to use Bait and Switch as effectively as possible back when Bait and Switch was a 20% buff. Then, Bait and Switch gets buffed to 35% shortly after, and now Cataclysmic has been the best linear fusion rifle in the game since that happened. This might be that kind of situation. I would not be surprised at all if they decide to buff Bipod by quite a lot in short order, and then it will be quite competitive. I'm not sure at what point I would call it good. You know, I don't want to sit around hoping, but it'll be good if they get that damage reduction down a fair bit. And you know what? You don't even need to wait around for Bipod buffs to happen because Bipod is not stopping Apex Predator from being insanely stinking good right now. We look at the first perk column here. Starfire Protocol is pretty much dead, but if you're still hucking several grenades of damage phase these days, we have Demo in the first column for some free reloads. We have Reconstruction and Slideways, like I mentioned, which are both crazy. We'll talk about those in a minute. In the second column, we have Bait and Switch, like I mentioned, and we'll be talking more about that one too, trust me. And we also have the old classics of Explosive Light and Frenzy, which are both fantastic. So back to Bait and Switch now. I, I think everyone is pretty aware of how good Explosive Flight and Frenzy are, so let's talk about Bait and Switch. The biggest downside to Bait and Switch on a rocket launcher is the fact that you need to shoot an unbuffed rocket shot to activate the perk. On a linear fused rifle, this isn't such a big deal because one shot is only 5% of your reserves, so you're expending a much smaller share of your total damage to just get the perk up. On a rocket launcher, it's more like 10-11%, depending on you know, whether you rallied with reserves and whatever. But 35% damage is plenty to justify the one unbuffed rocket. Make no mistake about that. Even a second unbuffed rocket. Any more than that gets a little dicey, but that's not what we're talking about. This makes the goal to get off as many rockets as possible while bait and switch is up, which is for 10 seconds. There are tons of ways to do this, but it'll probably be a lot more inputs than anyone is used to doing in a damage phase. Slideways is the obvious and most universally accessible perk for this. You can cancel Slideways three second internal cooldown by briefly switching to another weapon and then back to the rocket, which will allow you to spam slide reloads very quickly. There's also Rain of Fire for Solar Warlocks, reloading your rocket with Icarus Dash. We've got Threat of Ascent with Threat of Generation, giving you several grenades per damage phase for free reloads on Strand. We have Marksman's Dodge on Hunter. You can even do Sick Coyote for two of them. There's tons of stuff. Just know that with a bait and switch rocket, 
Your goal should be to activate bait and switch and then spam out as many rockets as humanly possible before the perk runs out. The resulting damage is as good, if not better, than anything that any other rocket can do, albeit with a lot more work. The other really interesting perk is Reconstruction. There's the obvious plus side to Reconstruction of always starting damage with two rockets in your gun, which is, that, that's good. But Reconstruction might not end up helping you at all over the course of a damage phase unless you play around it, since you need to have not shot the rocket for a little over three seconds to, to for it to start actually reloading your gun. But since we don't have auto-loading holster like we tend to on a lot of rockets, and with how popular Izanagi rocket swapping is, a lot of people are going to look to Reconstruction to be their stand-in for auto-loading holster for Izzy rocket swapping purposes. And you know what? It's actually way more usable than I thought it would be. You just need to wait like an extra beat you know, for reconstruction to do its thing just a tiny bit longer than auto loading holster would take to get the reload done. And it'll happen. It's it's pretty solid. And you know what? Odds are it won't even matter too, because a huge strength of Izzy rocket swapping is in its flexibility, allowing you to throw a grenade or a super or whatever in between firing your two guns. And if you're doing anything like that, the extra downtime won't even be noticeable because, you know, the grenade or whatever ate up the time. I mean, hell, if you're doing a super, it might even fill up both rockets. You swap back after Izzy, and then you've got two rockets in there. And speaking of filling up both rockets, something I really like doing is reloading my rocket with Marksman's Dodge or something right after I shoot it, so that when I swap back to it on my normal timing, after, you know, shooting Izzy, Reconstruction does, does its thing, Reconstruction will have put a second rocket in. So for that functionality, it is much better than auto-loading holster. One little thing about Izzy Rocket Swapping, though, is with Izzy Rocket Swapping, you're not going to want to go for bait and switch. Because you want to, like I said, spam out as many rockets as possible while bait and switch is up. So you're going to end up getting a lot more unbuffed rockets if you're doing Izzy Rocket Swapping, since Izzy is eating into a lot of your bait and switch uptime. So in that case, Explosive Light is going to be a bit better there. And that leaves us with kind of two main perk combos, right? We have like Slideways slash Demolitionist with Bait and Switch for your Bait and Switch spam out rockets as fast as you can. And then we have Reconstruction with Explosive Light for swap combos, Izzy Rocket Swapping, stuff like that. But honestly, there's not a lot of bad here, except Bipod. Bi Bipod's pretty bad. As long as you put in the work and figure out how to use the roll you've got, it will do tons of damage. For any roll, ideally you get a bunch of handling, velocity, or reload speed if you're manually reloading. Impact casing is nice if you can get it, but it's not a deal breaker. And I mean, so now there's a lot there. There's a ton to this rocket. You'll have to work for it a bit, like I mentioned, but this rocket is going to put out more damage than any other rocket in the game if you do put in that work. I love the design of this perk pool for that reason, and it's definitely something you should go get. Maybe even the number one thing I think you should go get from the new Last Wish weapons. Moving on though, next up is Transfiguration, another primary. It's gonna be a kinetic 150 RPM high impact frame scout rifle. And these 150 RPM scouts have a pretty competitive TTK and basically infinite range in PVP, but you still don't really see them much in PVP or PVE because they just don't feel very good to use for a lot of players. I know personally, You'd need to bribe me a hefty sum to use a 150 RPM scout, but maybe Transfiguration can turn that around since its perk selection is quite good. Perks in question, we've got another opportunity for double damage perks here with Rampage in the first column. You can pair that with another damage perk in the second column, which will definitely be able to two tap in PVP. For that potential second damage perk, you could be looking for something like Adrenaline Junkie, Kill Clip, and Harmony. We've also got Explosive Payload and Kinetic Tremors, which are both fantastic PvE perks for this thing. If you don't want to go for Rampage in the first column, there's always Rapid Hit, Keep Away, Demolitionist, and Rewind Rounds. And I think these are important to consider since I don't expect Rampage to be quite as ubiquitous on this thing as I expect Kill Clip to be on Shattering Bone, so keep that in mind. Base range on these 150 scouts are great to begin with, so I'd go for big bumps to the other stats from barrels like Fluted, or you can bump the Recoil to 100 with Arrowhead Break. Then go for Flared Magwell or Tac Mag would be the choice for me for magazines. Topped off with a Handling or Stability Masterwork for PvP, and then a Reload Speed Masterwork for PvE. 
I'll probably just craft one of these for PvE to try out. I love my Frenzy Servant Leader, so that'll be tough to get off of me. I mean, even outside of that, there are quite a few good Kinetic Scouts out there. But, I mean, Demolitionist with Explosive Payload or Kinetic Tremors definitely sounds nice. So I'll be trying that out. Age Old Bond is next. It's a Void 360 RPM High Impact Frame Auto Rifle. No double damage perks here on this gun, but we do have two rare first column appearances, those being Dragonfly and Repulsor Brace. And when we look over at the fourth column, you can get Repulsor Brace with destabilizing rounds to self-proc Repulsor Brace with just this gun. This was a meme roll that you could get on the Root of Nightmare Slug shotgun, but in this case, it actually makes a lot of sense and will be one of the top perk options for this auto rifle, I'd imagine. If you don't want to go that route, though, Dragonfly or Stats for All will work well with Kill Clip or Golden Tricorn in the second column. There's also Fourth Times the Charm in the first column that you could pair with Target Lock or Focused Fury for some above average champion killing for a primary weapon. We also have another new perk in the fourth column on this gun, which is Collective Action, giving a 20% boost to weapon damage for seven seconds after picking up any subclass collectible like Fire Sprites, Stasis, Shards, etc. And if you pick up additional collectibles during the duration, it can be extended up to 12 seconds. In my testing, Void Breaches and Fire Sprites actually didn't seem to be working to extend the duration. They did activate the perk, but they didn't extend it. I'm not sure if this is a bug or if there is some other functionality in there. At this time, if we assume that every collectible should be able to extend the duration, and it is that 20% buff, I don't expect the uptime to be very good on the perk, or at least worse than many other perks. So I don't see it as a particularly valuable perk outside of some Behemoth Titan Crucible Cheese, which is definitely there. Past that though, for Barrel, Mag, and Masterwork on the gun, I think it's best to go for maximum possible stat bumps on this archetype. So I'll be crafting my Destabilizing Rounds Repulsor Brace roll with Flared Magwell and Fluted Barrel, though I think specking for range a bit is also quite good. Tyranny of Heaven might actually be the one weapon in this set that doesn't seem immediately great to me. It's a solar lightweight frame bow, which for my Crucible bow enjoyers is not a great start. And for the PvE bow enjoyers, you're probably just looking for Explosive Head and Archer's Tempo, which are both here, but in the same column. And so now outside of that, there's a lot of fine options here. We have Dragonfly in the first column, which you could pair with one for all in the second column to let the Dragonfly explosions proc one for all for you. You could do Incandescent from the fourth column. I expect that'll be what most people do. And then there's also Golden Tricorn. I mean, it's just, most of the rolls on this bow are fine. There's a lot in here, nothing that super stands out. And then, you know, on top of that, for me personally, GMs were the only part of the game I found myself ever using legendary bows in at all. And with how much easier champs are to deal with now, I really only ever use the exotic bows if I want to use a bow. So none of my legendary bows really get any use these days. They're just in the vault collecting dust. If you're a bow enthusiast, something on this bow probably got you pretty excited. And at that point, you know what you want better than I do. For those of you looking to just kind of try this thing, I would just look out for or craft as short a draw time as possible through things like Elastic String and a Charge Time Masterwork with your choice of the aforementioned perks. If you're not that excited about it, you're not missing much. Rounding out our selection of primary weapons from Last Wish is Nation of Beasts, which is a beast of a gun. Arc 140 RPM adaptive frame hand cannon and continuing the trend of really having more good perks than bad. And in the first column on this gun, we have a new perk called Eddy Current, which activates after sprinting for a short time and then will buff your reload speed after you finish sprinting. Has its effect increased even further if you are amplified? And honestly, if you aren't amplified, I couldn't even notice the buff. It could not be working. It's early in the season and the perk is brand new. Like I said before, like it's all very much a possibility. While amplified, it is quite noticeable though. Probably like 30, 40 reload speed if I had to guess. But that's still really not great. Probably not what you're going to go for in the first column at the end of the day, though, since we have Keep Away and Perpetual Motion as options, which will be great in every area of the game. You could also go for Opening Shot for PvP or Dragonfly for PvE. 
In the second column, to pair with those, we have Explosive Payload here, which will be fantastic in all areas of the game as well. We have Volt Shock, which is always great to see. That'll be one that I'll probably go for, and I'm sure a lot of you will as well. We've got Kill Clip, Golden Tricorn, and Collective Action to kind of round out the top tier of the fourth column perks. Now, I'm not really too sure what I will be crafting on this gun personally. I was hoping to see the Frenzy Volt Shot roll that Posterity gets on this gun. That would have been really exciting. No dice though, but that's okay. I'm kind of split between Dragonfly and Keep Away as my first column perk to pair with Volt Shot. I think that I'll, I'll be going for one of those two. Either way though, I will be rounding it out with Hammerforge Rifling for range from the barrel. I'll be going Flared Magwell for reload speed from the magazine, and then topping it off with a range masterwork. For PvP, there's a lot of good rolls too, but I'd want Keep Away and Explosive Payload personally for just a lot of consistency with, again, Hammer Forge Rifling and a range masterwork, but Accurized Rounds this time from my magazine for more range. All in all, it's a really solid gun in PvE and PvP. I loved this gun back in the day, so a part of me wishes they went up maybe a little harder on making the perk pool super juicy, but it's still really good. But that's all from me for today, gamers. If you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more content. We've got a lot more weapons to cover from this season, so you won't want to miss it. Comment what roles you've gotten so far and what you're looking for. Until then, deuces.